Tell us about your five-step process to digital transformation. There are five stages that um, I've identified um, through both personal experience and, and research in this, this field. Um, stage one is what I call foundation or beginning. Uh, in most organizations, um, private or public sector, this is what is most often confused with digital transformation, uh, i.e. simple automation of tasks. So, you know, you have a hundred accountants and you're trying to get a piece of software um, that will automate the way they, they actually do work, right? In reality, that's not transformation, it's automation of a certain way of doing things. Uh, but it's understandable because you do use digital technologies and, and so on and so forth. And so that's stage one. Stage two in most organizations is um, what I call siloed. That's when you may have either a function within an organization. So, you know, let's say the marketing function discovers that, oh, you could use artificial intelligence to target consumers or you could do online selling in addition to retail. Again, this is not an enterprise-wide strategy behind it, but just more organic evolution. Or you may have you know, a, a subsidiary of a global company start to experiment with this technology, let's say in Singapore, and say, wow, you know, we can run our business differently. So that's stage two. Stage three, uh, which is partially synchronized, is where the leader of the organization, you know, either out of their own conviction or driven by market forces or the board of directors say, we have to do digital transformation, right? Uh, so they actually create a corporate strategy. So this is where uh, General Electric was uh, a few years ago under Jeff Immelt, where he said, you know, we want to be a data company. So the good thing about being in this stage is you now start to have a common strategy that starts to inform your business uh, model, but it is called partially synchronized because you are not completely there. You know, there's something missing in the execution, and usually that's a systemic, disciplined approach to actually getting things done in a big way. Stage four is what I call fully synchronized, and this is the stage where you actually are able to adopt uh, the, the new technologies, the new business models, and you're actually successful in dramatically changing your business model. Right? Now that's stage four and not stage five because it's missing an ingredient. And that missing ingredient, which is what you find in stage five, is the organization. You have to change the DNA of the organization. Uh, and those are examples such as Netflix, which has really reinvented itself at least three times, maybe four times, from mail-in DVDs to, you know, uh, streaming media to original content to now global business models. And the only thing that allows you to do that over and over again is when your organization really approaches business with a completely disruptive mindset of how do I disrupt myself, right? And that's stage five, that's living DNA. So when business leaders kind of talk about digital transformation, it's very possible that they're thinking about automation or they're thinking about siloed innovation efforts. But really where I try and bring you know, a little bit of method to the madness is in setting the right goals and, and following a very disciplined step-by-step -step checklisted approach to getting to stage five. Tell us a little bit more about stage five. That's an important step in the entire process as well. Um, and you talk about from an organizational perspective, changing the DNA. How do, you, how do organizations make sure that that's being implemented in the right way using the right models for their organizations? And that's really where the importance of learning uh, comes in, right? So here's the difference between stage four and stage five. In, in stage four, you've reinvented yourself, but you are just one technology, one market forces change one political environment change away from being disrupted again, right? And the only reassurance against not being disrupted again is, is your people, right? So what do you do? Firstly, you really have to strongly believe in creating the learning organization because you're not going to be able to, you know, hire an entirely new bunch of people and let go of your older people every three or four years in a disruptive world. Your best bet 
is to actually change the DNA so that your organization leads you to that next disruption. So what do you need to do that? First off, you really, really do need a learning plan. And I know most organizations say, we have a learning strategy, don't worry about it. They actually don't. They have a strategy to train their people in certain skills. They don't have a strategy to, you know, to become a, a living DNA learning organization that, that is foolproof against constant waves of technology and change, right? Uh, so the one thing is to, to actually uh, be driven by the fact that you have to future-proof your organization by becoming a learning organization. Second thing you have to do is you really have to uh, retrain the board of directors, the C-suite, the middle management, and the entry level on digital technologies. I'm not talking about you know, making all these people into, you know, data scientists or, or software programmers, you don't. All you need to do is you need to have enough understanding in every level in the organization of how technology is going to change your particular role. So if you work in the warehouse, what is the warehouse manager of the future look like? I mean, certainly not directing forklift trucks, more likely you know, doing tweaks to algorithms that machines use to, to move your products along. Uh, the same is true for the CEO, which is, you know, how do you know enough about data science to ask the right questions of your analysts, right? Uh, and so that's the second thing that you really need to do. The third thing you need to do is then you have to have a plan for your people, right? Um, I read um, uh, uh, about a month or two ago that Amazon is going to invest $700 million to uh, train their organization. And I almost fell off my chair. It's like, what are you guys talking about? You are the most digitally savvy company in the entire world. But I think they have it right. A one-time training on skills is no guarantee that you're going to be good tomorrow and the day after. So you really do need a reinvestment plan for your people.